What's happening, guys, and welcome to our weekly Impact Wrestling Review. I'm Keith, and I'm joined by Ro. What's going on, man? Not much, Keith. How you doing, man? I'm doing all right. Um, what would you think overall of last night's show? You know, I, to be honest, I walked in. There was really only three things that I was looking forward to, and um, two of those three delivered, which one surprise that I liked and we'll get into. Um, it was all right. I mean, you know, basic episode of Impact. Yeah, I thought it was pretty solid. I, I thought they did have a couple of good segments that I enjoyed, and then there were some things that I didn't enjoy. But, you know, that's that's kind of an every week thing with basically every type of show possible. You're not going to like everything. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. And, you know, I always try to walk into at times, even though there's things I'm looking forward to, and try to have an open mind. But I just think, you know, at this point, there's things that click with me when I'm watching. And there's some things where I'm just kind of like I tune out. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I agree with that because sometimes we do see repeats of matches that aren't really going anywhere, so it's easy to tune out with those things. So I guess we'll start with the review of the show, and then we'll talk about some news afterward. Sound good? Sounds good, man. Let's All do right. it. Yeah. So I I enjoyed the opening of the show. I think they did a good job of recapping all that happened last week with uh, building the Moose and Trey and the main event and the heel turn and all those things. And then that first opening match was Moose versus Trey. Um, This was, you know, your typical David versus Goliath story here. Um, Moose definitely hit a couple of nice moves on Trey. What's up? No, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, No, uh, we saw Moose catch Trey at one point after he uh, Trey hit a flip dive over the top rope, and he ended up hitting him with a uh, power bomb onto the apron. We saw Moose swing Trey into the stick, ring steps, and then eventually Moose won with the uh, spear. But uh, I thought they did a good job with this match. I mean, Trey made—you know—he didn't get made to look like an idiot and stuff like that. He did definitely did keep up uh, with Moose and put up a good fight. But overall, you know, the right man went over. Yeah, I thought the way that they laid this out, and this was one of the matches I was looking forward to because I just wanted to see how they would do it because, you know, we always see the typical um, heavyweight or super heavyweight in Moose's case faces the uh, light heavyweight high-flying type. And they did it in a creative style because every time we seen Trey try to, say, for example, hit some sort of Rana, Moose was catching him every Mm -hmm. time, and they were being consistent with that, which I thought was excellent. And um, just the style overall, the clash of styles, I really thought it was nice. And Moose showed something that he's able to work with smaller guys. So that's always good, you know, to have that type of versatility. He's not just a guy that only can work with, like, say, a Brian Cage type. So yeah, all around, well, I liked it. We we did see that with him in Austin Aries, too, at Slammiversary. I thought that was Moose, one of his better matches that he had. So it's not really a huge shocker there. But then again, like you said, he's mostly been lined up with the bigger guys. So it is good to see him, like you said, more versatile. Um, And it seems like this is going to continue because I think for the Windsor tapings, they had also advertised Moose versus uh, Wentz. So I guess this is going to kind of be what Moose is going to be doing for the time being. Yeah, this is good for him. I wonder if they'll continue just kind of have, is it Moose versus the Rascals or will Moose get a partner? Mm -hmm. Um, If they decide to just go with Moose versus the Rascals, I think that's good. Um, I really want to see the Rascals versus Moose. I mean, maybe (laughs) that's something, maybe something that that's something that they can do, you know, say at Rebellion where maybe the Rascals finally get their comeuppance. But I, I thought what's different when you had used Austin Aries, when he faced Austin Aries, I think they kind of made Austin Aries look more that he, even though he's smaller, he still could hang with him because we've seen him hit the brain brusher twice mm, when they that's wrestled. That's true. Whereas in this match, you know, you didn't see Trey lift Moose off his feet, really. That's a fair point. Um, but, yeah, no, I, I thought, you know, the crowd got into the match. They were behind Trey. I mean, the Rascals are... Big fan favorites, so uh, hopefully they don't end up turning them heel down the line. <laughs> uh, who knows, man? That's yeah. the well. <laughs> you know, originally when they brought him in, I figured they were going to be a part of OVE because they're a part of that whole I- o- OI4K, uh, you know, group. So, you know, down the road, there's always that possibility. Yeah, you never know. I mean, everything's so fluid. I mean, um, I think right now it'd probably be best to keep them as face, just given the tag team, tie, uh, well, I don't want to say title picture, just a tag team scene in general. I mean, I really don't know who else is our faces at this point. Yeah, no, you definitely make a valid point there. 
Um, so speaking of OVE, we see them backstage. Sammy says the Chris are going to take care of Willie Mack, and it's going to be him and Swan one-on-one, and he says he is walking out X-Division champion. So that is our main event for the evening, which uh, I-, I thought they did a really good job with that, but we will get to that later on. Uh, Melissa interviews Tessa. Tessa, you know, says that she wants Gail to publicly apologize to her, and she wants Impact to relieve Gail Kim of her duties. And we get to that later on. Um, and then we have our second match of the night, and that's Falaba and KM versus Eli Drake and Eddie Edwards, both coming off of recent wins with Falaba and KM defeating Reno Scum and Eddie and Eli defeating the Desi Hit Squad. Um, I, I, I thought this match was good. I, I enjoyed uh, you know, it seemed like it was a fast paced match. Everybody seemed to work well together. Um, a little strange that Eddie Edwards, once he took out uh, Falaba on the outside, got a huge pop from the crowd. Um, what did you think of this match? I thought it was good in the sense of since, you know, we've seen Eli Drake motion about going for the tag titles with Eddie. So, you know, these are the type of matches you want to have facing other tag teams that, you know, are, have the same aspirations. You know, I know with KM and Follow, the booking has kind of been um, inconsistent in a sense where they've never really seen, like, a threat to the tag team title. I mean, I, I can't recall. Have they even had a tag team title match? Um, I think the only thing they had was when they faced, what, LAX, and had they beat them, they would have gotten a tag title match, I think, the last set of Vegas tapings. Okay, so the number one contender. Okay, so that's pretty much the closest. So I think in a sense like that, I thought it worked, but um, outside of that, I mean, it kind of went by for me. Yeah. Well, Eddie ends up passing the kendo stick to Eli. Eli cracks KM over the head with it. Then Eddie hits the Boston knee party on KM for the win. It's just kind of where do they go here? I mean, it seemed like, you know, Eddie and Eli are going through all the tag teams. And you basically have the tag title picture tied up with LAX and the Lucha Brothers. So it's just going to be interesting to see what route they go with them coming with Rebellion coming up. Well, I know, is it? At against all odds, we're getting one more match between LAX and Lucha Brothers, or they haven't announced. I, I don't it think yet. they've announced it yet. No. Okay. Yeah. So one would assume, assuming that they don't get a rematch, I'm guessing they'll face LAX um, somewhere down the road, and that'll kind of be a number one contenders match. Yeah. Mm, possibly. We will see. Um, and then we have Johnny and him and Tyre. Pulling up to the building, they get stopped in the parking lot by the investigative reporter. He's asked about what happens last week, and Johnny tells him to uh, buy a ticket to find out. So this is the beginning of uh, a whole list of events that happens between them. Um, And then we get the investigative reporter knocking on Johnny's dressing room. Ty answers and pushes him down. So uh, Johnny's hiding behind Mommy's skirt right now. Yeah, she also pushed him out out of the way when they first interacted. So my takeaway was it was Taya Punk and the reporter. I mean, I guess that makes her, you know, badass in a sense. But <laughs> the yeah, alpha, yeah. right? And I know we're gonna get into that next. But uh, yeah, let's once we get into it, I'll share right. my thoughts. <laughs> that sounds good. Um, all right, then we have uh, Willie Mack and Rich Swan backstage. Uh, Rich says he's got this. He's Willie says that he's going to take care of the Chris. Ethan Page walks up. He says, you don't need to worry about Rich's business when you have a match with me tonight. He also says that Swan will have more problems than just OVE because Ethan has been thinking about the X Division Championship since homecoming. Um, You know, I I thought this was good because it did a little something for Ethan Page versus Willie Mack. It's not like the match was just thrown together for no reason. So, you know, I'll give him a a, a golf clap for that one. (laughs) You know, I um, I feel like this is the third time I've seen these guys uh, face each other, At and least. and I'm hoping to see a different outcome. And you know, unfortunately, I've yet to see that different outcome. Mm-hmm. And we will talk about that a little <laughs> later on. Um, then we have Ace Austin versus Damian Hyde. This was his second match. This was showcasing Ace Austin, very very talented uh, wrestler. He um, Definitely has some innovative offense, and uh, he went over with basically a squash match. He went over with the uh, fold, which is what the running uh, blockbuster. 
Yeah, I don't know why Impact doesn't do more of these. Like, when they're trying to debut a new talent, you know, have them face a couple enhancement guys before you're ready to thrust them in a feud. But, yeah, this was good. A nice little showcase for him. But I wonder if this is what we're going to get to see. And then, next thing you know, he's in some multi-man X-Division match. Well, I actually think they did advertise that for Windsor, so. Oh, uh, <sighs> spoke too soon. <laughs> yeah, so that'll happen. All right, and then we have Josh in the ring. He's talking with Johnny Impact and Taya. So I don't know about you here, but it seems like uh, Don's reaction or audio was definitely not done from the commentator's booth. It definitely sounded like they had recorded it after the fact. Did you get that impression too? I didn't catch that. I just thought he was a little bit too over the top. It just sounded like sounded cheesy, like, why, Johnny, why, how could you? Yeah. yeah. Like, really? <laughs> um, and then we had, um, you know, Josh asking Johnny why. And he said he did it because of the internet smart, smart marks. The fans don't care about Johnny Impact. They just want to see Johnny get his body broken. The fans turned on Johnny when Cage was brought into the world title picture. Now, how is he supposed to be loyal to fans when they're not loyal to him? And Josh asks Taya about her match with Jordan next week. She says that Jordan seems to always come up short. But then the focus goes back onto Johnny. And then Johnny used to care about the fans. But now we all, all he cares about is Taya and the title. So this segment was 100% written by Don Callis. I, I, I truly believe that because he has thrown that word, you know, smart mark and mark around all the time, whether it be on Killing the Town, his New Japan commentary. I'm sure he's done it here in Impact, but this just felt like it came from him. It was cringeworthy for me. I found myself watching this and... Because, I, you know, first I wanted to see, well, what's the explanation for him turning heel? And then I'm like, well, you know, according to some, him turning heel, he's going to be an awesome heel. Um, the impression I get, first off, he has more of a beta personality. So I think to buy him as a top-level heel, because essentially since he's the world champion, you know, he would be the top heel. He doesn't come across as that. If anything, he comes across as a mid-card heel. I mean, I think Taya seems more of the alpha in this than Johnny does. And I mean, if that's the case, give her the world title, you know, and, you know, have her <laughs> have her be the one calling out Cage. But I don't know, I, you know, for a lot of people who believe he's so cheesy as a face, he's no different than as as a heel. Now, I will say this. I think moving forward for this to be a success, they should really play up the brains versus brawn aspect. Like mm-hmm. have it have it where it's like Johnny maybe is more of like a. Um, a mastermind in the sense of you know he uses his head whereas cage is just all strength and stuff but i mean i don't know i mean this is just a way to drag out we're gonna get you know a rematch of homecoming in what in about a month yeah. yeah a month from now so yeah i i mean in i don't know about you but the crowd it, it seemed to fall flat for me on this it, it it didn't i didn't feel like the crowd really was like vibing with this i mean and i think in part two i never got the vibe that people were turning on johnny like that i think it seemed to just to me you know it seemed more that was coming from social media as opposed to the crowd because he, he would get cheers so it, it was just, it was just kind of like the hill turn just kind of came out of nowhere same thing with tires it came out of nowhere so it, I don't know, it just like when I was listening to the crowd, they just seemed so bored. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know, just the whole way that Johnny was thrusted into the world title match at Bound for Glory. Everybody was kind of crapping on that. And then you had the, the screwy finish at Bound for Glory. Aries is gone. And then Johnny seemed to be, you know, your de facto face and he was getting cheered and then homecoming comes and then people weren't really cheering because I, I noticed it there. And I, I think we had brought that up that they started to boo him at that point. But why three months later or two and a half months later, are we just getting this now? You see, I'm of the mindset, too, that with Johnny's case, I think people were annoyed with him more so because he kept getting shot after shot after shot after shot. It's kind of like what we're seeing with Cage. So that's what kind of worries me. If Cage is going to be there, the next guy in line, you know, could he, you know, have the same fate? Like, people like a fresh title picture. Like, I, I really think they missed the ball on with Cross. I really thought, 
even though I know their focus was on Cage and Johnny, they had to found a gem in Cross. And now Cross is going to really take a backseat role to all of this, which is unfortunate. But I think that was just my thing. And what he said was true. I mean, he was, you know, defending the title week in mm-hmm. and week out. I mean, people like that. People like seeing world title matches. Or, I mean, like seeing title matches in general. So it wasn't wrong. I just really felt booking really felt felt him and i never thought he was going to be one of these long-lasting champions i really had thought he would have been a guy you know maybe hold it for a month or two yeah transitional champion yeah exactly and i think it would have been fine and people would have been fine with it but it's dragged out and like you said even at homecoming i think post homecoming that would have been the perfect time to turn him here Mm -hmm. you know but instead you know they took us on this big old story i mean they close off homecoming with cross toss and tie out of the to (laughs) to the audience now that just seems you know seems like a no a flash in the pan so to speak yeah i don't know it's just all over the place yeah a little bit um and again we have a whole month to go before that match happens again um so we have uh james mitchell and rosemary backstage rosemary says we were promised the bunny but all we got is an empty meat suit where is her soul rosemary says she's not afraid to talk to him mitchell says he cannot let her do that rosemary says if we have to return to the undead realm to get the bunny's soul back then that is what we will do so that is what's going to happen next week um so who do you think there's actually going to be a him revealed or is this just going to be you know, one of those figures that they just refer to and we don't get anything. <laughs> to be honest, up until you told me when this came on, I like totally checked out. Like I I like seeing Jim uh Father James Mitchell appear. You know, I, I kinda wish they found a way for him to manage somebody, but I don't know, I'm s I've been so over the undead realm and I know it's irresponsible of me when we're reviewing to, you know, be skipping over stuff. I'll, you know, sans the GWN flashbacks, but I, I'm just so checked out on it. I just, <laughs> it's been going on for six months, right? It started with the whole Kiera and Allie thing before bound for glory. That was back in the end of September, beginning of October. And here we are at the end of March and we're going back to the undead realm. I just, I don't know, man. It's just dragged on so much. And well, like, it hasn't I, done anything for anyone. Yeah, that too. And, and I, I get it. Like, the thing about it was the Rosemary injury um, obviously delayed things. But that's when you kind of go a, a different direction. This isn't the first time it's happened. You think about, remember when we were supposed to get the Red Wedding match? Oh, and yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, they didn't, you know prolong something to wait till Taya got back you know they had you know put Rosemary in a you know different Mm -hmm. you know different angles and stuff so yeah I've just I mean this whole thing I'm looking for what's the the end of it and I'm sure you know we all kind of have an idea given what transpired this past week right but it just was that really the payoff you know it's just I don't know I I really don't know I I and I've seen online some people are you know into it some people aren't I mean I just I'm just I've been so over it (laughs) Yeah. And and again, like I had said, that nobody has really benefited from this. I mean, you know, the whole big thing was Allie with her heel turn. And I I felt that had gone over pretty flat when it happened because she was, you know, the the biggest baby face they had in the knockouts division at, at that point with Rosemary down with the injury. She would always come out to a huge pop. They turn her heel and all of a sudden the crowd's kind of flat and not really sure how to react to her. Sue Young didn't gain anything. She hasn't really had any forward momentum since she lost the knockouts championship. Kier has been, you know, cast to the background. I mean, Jordan finally got herself out of it. So now she's, you know, has a title match coming up. But yeah, that's that's my real takeaway from the whole thing. And it just comes to show you at times and. You know, the one thing with Impact, what, I, the, what, what I've what i loved with Impact and, you know, some of the fan base was the history of the company. It wasn't always, you know, boo the faces and cheer the hills. Like, hills were booed, faces were cheered. So I think sometimes when you're doing some of these hill turns, if you're doing them just abrupt, they don't, like, everybody's not good heel. Just like not everybody's good face. Mm-hmm. I think Ali... I'm not saying I don't know what she's done in the indies. I'm sure in the indies she might have played heel before. But I thought just given her story, like she was a bona fide baby face. Like she was always going to forever be a baby face. Yeah. And I mean, that's like her personality, too. She 
<laughs> pretty much was was the character. So, eh, whatever. I mean, they 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 did an, a decent job doing the heel turn because it did you know it did take a little while for them to do it. But I just think overall it had gone flat. But we will talk more about Ali after we review the show. Um, so then Disco gets interviewed by the investigative reporter. I guess this is what he's going to be doing. Uh, the reporter, that is, going backstage and talking to people. Uh, he says that you have a match, and this is your training. He was sitting at the bar. Uh, he says, I'm wrestling a woman. I don't need to train. And he says next week he's going to teach Scarlett that a woman can't be the man. So this was definitely a shot at WWE. Well, that's the only part I liked because, you know, I've told you, <laughs> I've told you, I said the whole, the man character, nothing against the wrestler herself, you know, but the whole character is, just, I, I think with certain gimmicks and stuff like that, like there has to be some sort of um, believability. I don't know if that's even a word. I apologize. Um, but you have to buy into it. And I don't know when I look at like, say Becky Lynch, for example, I think she comes across, I mean, like, you know, she seems like a strong woman and stuff like that in character, but she doesn't come across as this badass, like, I'll mess you up type of person. And I think sometimes, even though, you know, we know all this stuff, they're playing characters, but it just, you have to be able to believe that. And I think that's the problem that I have. It's hard for me to buy into that, let alone she's facing, you know, a former MMA champion. Now, not to get, you know, get away from, you know, because this we cover impact, but, uh, yeah, you know, I feel like this angle with all this and that, it just I, I just feel like it's doing Scarlett a disservice because once again we see her wrestle. I mean, in Impact is I think Impact is promoted before uh shows that she's appeared on. Mm -hmm. Or you know, some of the partnerships. So I just kinda just wondered like why couldn't they just have her face, I mean, an Alicia and run through an Alicia or or something like that. Like why disco? Like the value of disco. What does she what does she gain from beating disco? There's no value to it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, is it a win for women? I mean, she should be able to beat Disco because Disco doesn't wrestle actively. You just I, I just don't get behind it, but nonetheless, that's what we're gonna get. So Yeah. yeah. That'll happen next week, so that'll be uh, very interesting. Uh, and then we see Gail come out of Impact Management's office. She's asked about Tessa's demands. And she says lawyers are involved, all this other stuff. So then she says she will do what she has to do. And then we see LAX and the Lucha Brothers fighting backstage. A lot of getting beat with an empty water jug. <laughs> that was my takeaway. You know, what I thought was... I, and I guess this is what makes them heels. I'm, I'm assuming is when Conan was like, "Oh, you guys could have just given us the match. You didn't want to give us the match." Mm -hmm. Like, um, but outside of that, yeah, um, it seemed like the Lucha Brothers got the upper hand, which didn't surprise me one bit. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> so I, I guess we're gonna go with the Lucha Brothers being the heels now. Who knows at this point, man? Really, it. I, you know, the the thing what I've never understood, like. There's nothing wrong with doing heels versus heels or faces versus faces. I mean, you can do that, you know, here and there. It doesn't always have to be one face and one heel. And, I mean, right here, I mean, you could book a heel versus heel. I mean, I think LAX would probably get more of the the cheer, the cheer face cheers but or just the cheers in general. But, you know, if they're both heels, just do heel versus heel. Yeah. I don't know. Just need some more motivation for, you know, matches to continue on like this. <laughs> That, uh, that's all I'm asking for. Sometimes that's too much, though. Uh, and then we see Willie. He goes into a backstage room. The Chris follow him. Door closes. We hear a bunch of fighting. Willie walks out, chair in hand. And that brings us to our main event, Sammy Callahan versus Rich Swan for the X Division Championship. Um, I thought they put on a really strong main event here. Um, you know, this, this was a match with a... A long-winded uh, rivalry between the two of them, and you know, I, I just thought it was it was what it was sh supposed to be. Um, Rich Swan ends up picking up the victory after Sammy goes for a pile driver, and Swan reverses it, rolling Sammy up. And then the big story was the uh, post-match fight. Sammy attacks him first. Swan gets the upper hand. Then all of a sudden, we get the debut of Madman Fulton. He comes out, he takes out Swan, and he reveals an OVE shirt. Willie Mack comes out, but Fulton makes short work of him. Um, what did you think of this whole thing overall? All right, as far as the match, I liked it. My only problem was there was way too many false finishes where, like, 
you know, I know at times in pay-per-views we get that for the big, big matches. But, like, just say, for example, when Sammy hit that top row powerbomb, I really thought that should have ended it right there. Like, I think sometimes, you know, when you're doing a whole collection of moves in a match, there should be some moves that that should be it. You know, yeah. you don't, you don't, you know, get up from that. And, um, you know, I like that they went with the roll-up finish. Um, I'm assuming this is still going to continue, but this was great. Yeah. Um, I really feel... This is going to be Callahan's best opportunity to win a title in Impact. If he doesn't win the X Division Championship, I don't think he's going to win any championships in Impact. True. I just kind of, I just kind of get that vibe. I know there's some people who think he should be in the main event. I believe so too, but I just don't see that for him. Just the way that we see how some of the booking is. Yeah. Um, I do like the new, uh, what is it? Mad? They call him Mad Mad Fulton. I yeah. Think he used to be part of uh, Sanity, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. I like his addition, you know, uh, you know, strong, intimidating presence, and it helps OVE because, um, you know, we look at OVE, man, and, you know, more often than a lot, they're on the losing end. Well, the Chris brothers, at least. I mean, Sammy gets his wins here and there. So for them to add this name, you know, I'm assuming he'll be pushed, you know, strong out the gate or he'll be at least be protected and the feud continues. But, you know, and I don't want to nitpick too much, but. You're talking about it really kind of closed out. We've seen <laughs> two former WWE guys close out the show. Yeah. And I know with, with uh, Fulton, you know, I think he was mainly he, NXT. Yeah, he never made it to the main roster. So, so, I mean, I guess in that case, that's fine. But it's just once again, and, in, in, you know, like I said, we'll get into it. You know, my biggest concern with Impact is, you know, the lack of developing homegrown people. Like grabbing people that have, you know, some name recognition from WWE or Lucha Underground. Like, where's the homegrown talent that we can look at? Like, hey, that's who Impact built. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, cause, cause if this this Mad Matt Fulton guy, for example, if he does become a star, okay, and we we don't know. I mean, right now the way his gimmick is right now, he's part of OVE. He could break out of it, and you know who knows what he becomes, but. It's always gonna be attached to oh well he you know he got he made his name in WWE and you know there goes that type of a uh, you know negativity surrounding with it. But overall, um, I like this. Um, I'm hoping this isn't the end of this feud, and I'm hoping eventually Sami Khan comes out on top and uh, finally wins his first uh, championship in Impact. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, uh, I, I think the the muscle is much needed in OVE, and it really gives them that threat. Um, and, you know, this is something I had talked about months back when Brian Cage and Sammy Callahan were feuding over the X Division Championship is that, you know, the OVE, they could be your current day NWO or, you know, Bullet Club or whatever you want to go with. So I'm sure we could see more additions to uh, the group. But I, I think I know nobody likes fantasy booking, but I, I think had you had Fulton come out back back in November, whenever Sammy and Brian Cage had faced off and you had Fulton be the one to cause Brian Cage to lose the X Division Championship. He's a huge guy. Um, then you could have built Brian Cage versus Fulton to happen at homecoming. You could have had that Johnny impact and Killer Cross feud go to homecoming. And then you could have built Johnny versus Brian Cage at Rebellion. But, you know... That's just uh, my thought on it. But uh, no, I, I think he's definitely going to be a good fit in OV and makes them more of a threat. I'll, I'll even tell you a step further what they could have done. And I know f people hate the armchair creative, but who cares? <laughs> um, I, think show. They <laughs> <laughs> I think they could have done what you did and then had a drawn out feud between Cage and OVE with Cage eventually not only beating the madman Fulton, but beating Callahan, regaining the X division title, then as uh, eventually cashing in on um, uh, option C and then challenging Johnny impact. Right. So then, then that way, that way, you know, the X division, the prestige of that is good because you got a guy who lost it, wants it back. You know, he goes through months of, you know, trying to get it back, finally gets it back. Then after dominating, then he decides, Hey, I've done everything I could, you know, let me give someone else a shot. I'm going for the world title. Yeah. No, I think that would have worked well, but you know, I'm sure the cards weren't going to play out that way. Cause um, I think Fulton, he was probably working with MLW at that point. Um, but yeah, no, um, outside of, uh, I think Fulton had actually been on a Twitch special or one night only as a member of uh, OVE. 
I mean, granted, I think they had Rohit as an honorary member that night, but, you know, he had technically debuted as a member before it actually happened on TV. And, you, you know, sometimes it's just those little things that, that bother me. But I, I guess I should just uh, enjoy what I get, right? Fall in line, Keith. That's fall it. in line. <laughs> I know. All right, so what should we talk about first now that the show is over? Um, yeah, you know, I just want to bring this up and... It, it seems like uh, we had known that Cam was working without a contract and he made an announcement on Twitter yesterday that he was not going to be at the Windsor tapings. So I, I don't know about you, but I, I think his time is, is done. He said he will be at United We Stand, but that is more a collaboration of a bunch of different companies. I mean, I think, yeah, I agree with you. I think he's done. Um, I think what we're seeing with some of these talents when their contracts expire and um, whether it's a mutual parting or Impact doesn't re- want to uh, re- resign them or the talent doesn't want to resign, it seems like they got a good working relationship where they'll at least work, you know, a couple of shows with without being under contract and then finally depart. So try to finish up whatever angles that they have going on, which – you know, you got to say that's good. That's good on the talent, mm-hmm. you know, and, you know, that helps impact because in the past, I mean, when talent's contract was up, you know, they can go and do whatever and stuff like that. And then, you know, with the TV, you know, so much television already taped, you know, here we are, we're seeing this person appear on TV and then they're in X- NXT competing. Right. You know, it's just kind of just a, just a bad look. So, um, but if it is the end of KM, um, look, I mean, I'm not one of these people who think, you know, people who depart is the end of the world, but I always just find there's always a place for some of these individuals and you just hate that, you know, you see somebody leave and, you know, where you felt like they could have been used in a certain capacity and they did it because we're always talking about where's the stars. We're looking at these divisions. The divisions are so thin. Who's next? Who can do this? Who can do that? You know, and, you know, everything seems so repetitive. So it's just like, you know, when you see certain individuals leave, you're like, damn, you know, they could have felt that void, even if they weren't going to win. You know, it's just it's something, you know, and I always go back to when we had a um, follow bar challenge Austin Aries for the world title. What why I always go back to that is for one night they made follow a credible challenger. Mm-hmm. And that's when it told me it's like this company has the tools to anybody. I don't care. You could get a guy off of explosion. If for just one night they wanted to book them as like a real threat to the world title, they could. You know what and I mean? It, like they they've shown in the past that they can do enough to build a person where that one point us as fans can buy into that. And it just seems nowadays like, you know, they don't go that route. You know, they want to go with the person who has, you know, a res has built a a big resume and then just roll with that. Right. Yeah, no, absolutely. And it makes the show fun. You know, I mean, that was one of my favorite shows over the last, you know, eight to ten months was that the night that Fala had almost beat at Austin Aries for the world championship. And just the way that it was booked, I mean, and it wasn't like, even though, you know, a lot of people, you know, we all figured Austin was going to retain, but they did it in such a creative way where, wait, hold up, they're not going to do it. And that's what you like. It's like, oh, snaps. And, you know, that's what, you know, brought me to Impact because seeing matches where you're seeing people who, let's face it, probably wouldn't get these opportunities if they worked in other promotions, they're getting this opportunity. And, you know, I'm always a fan of seeing fresh faces in the main event scene. I hate seeing somebody that I've seen in a former company dominate and they come over here and dominate. Right. You know? So, but, uh, yeah, you know, I, I like KM. Um, I thought yeah, he I found a, a newfound life pairing with Fala. Um, yep. I thought when he was doing the whole Biff character, like there, that was a short shelf life with that. But I hate that they never really got the opportunity to not only challenge for the tag titles, but win them. I really thought they were over tag team closing out uh, 2018. Yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, it, it was interesting that before the end of the year, and I think before Christmas, that KM and Fala Ba had a Christmas book coming out and it didn't seem like Impact was capitalizing it on at all with you know like you said their most over tag team and it almost kind of seemed like the writing was on the wall there you know at the end of the day you know creative has their vision of you know who they see and what position so the people who get over all you know on their own if they're not part of what 
creative's vision was, it doesn't matter. And, you know, where I find myself dumbfounded, because, you know, I remember you had mentioned Don on that, uh, was it Killing the Town podcast? Mm Mm-hmm. Where when he was talking about getting the job, talking about building a core six guys, right. and you know, you fast forward now, we really don't have that. Like stuff is just seems so interchangeable. Really, we just get like one and two people, the champion and the challenger, and then you know you're rotating the challenger out. So, I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know, man. But um, yeah, I mean, if he's gone, hey, I appreciate his contributions. I always thought like KM was a walking creator wrestler because he would do some moves that like I used to create on the wrestling game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, uh, but you know, there's still a possibility that he does stay. We don't know for sure, um, but yeah, the, the missed opportunity. So I guess the biggest news coming out of the week was Allie signing with AEW. Apparently, Impact decided not to renew her contract in January, I believe. Um, so the reasoning behind it was they wanted to refresh the roster. Um, you know, this almost sounds to me like the reason that Pop didn't keep Impact on. You know? So bullshit, pretty much. That, I don't want to necessarily, <laughs> you know, say that, but that's kind of how I feel, man. Well, that's what I took it as, a straight bullshit, because you want to refresh the roster, but you bring Madison Rainbrack. Please explain to me how that's refreshing the roster. Oh, wait, she has ties to Josh. So, of course, look. Couples retreat, man. <laughs> I'll say this. Like... No, I'm not going to say I was the biggest Alley fan, but I liked her. My only criticism, and it had more much to do with the old regime, I felt like they took forever building her character when they were going through the whole she couldn't wrestle, and then they, the, finally they paid off. And she was a, a prominent fixture in, in the knockouts division. I thought her place in the knockouts division, just at this point, would be you're, you're that credible two-time champion that's going to help build you know, some of the newer knockouts. I know she feuded with Tessa. Awesome. You know, have her feud with Kier where it, where once Kier defeats her, it elevates Kier some. Right. You know, have her, ele- I mean, uh, working with, you know, the different knockouts. And she's always like, kind of like an Eddie Edwards role, so to speak, where, you know, how like Eddie Edwards, they can always put him in the title picture and he fits like a glove. So I thought that was the place for her. You know, Turning her, and I know, you know, they wanted to do the whole her versus Rosemary. I get it. And I was a fan of the Dark Alley thing at first. But I just think when you're doing something predicated off of one person and you don't know how long this person's on the shelf, like, it's hard to get a whole lot of mileage out of it. And when we ended up seeing her in the same matches week mm-hmm. in and week out, you know, I thought it was cool her working with Gra- uh, Jordan Grace, you know. But it was just the same type of matches, and she's on the losing end. And, I mean, she just, you know... You know, she became nothing where beating her didn't mean anything anymore. And right. anytime when you get become like that, there's a writing on the wall. I've always said this with Impact. Impact is a two to three year company with some of these wrestlers. So a lot of these people that depart, you see, you know, you could think of the first couple years where, you know, they got a push, you know, won championships. And then usually by the, t- the end of year two or year three, you know, they become irrelevant. Um whether she, I mean, it's been rumored that Impact didn't resign her. Some will argue that she didn't want, her, she wanted more money. I don't know. I really think the hate that she's got is unfair, and I think it has much more to do because she went to AEW. Oh yeah. Why? Why people are bothered by AEW? I mean, I don't know. I mean, I what I find fascinating though with AEW is the fact like this. As much as people want to shit on it, talking about it hasn't launched. They're getting people to sign on board, even though they're not even, you know, they're barely getting off the ground. That speaks volumes into the trust that they have in, you know, the the brains behind everything. And I know it helps, too, having the, uh, um, I know Tony Khan, he's the son of the Jaguar, uh, the mm-hmm. owner of the Jaguars. So I think that helps, too. But it's obvious these people believe in what vision they have. So you can't get mad at that. If anything, you know, I would, you know, for me, I'm looking at it, Impact, like, why aren't people believing that about you guys? You know, why right. you, why why is this coming? That's not even hasn't even aired. Everything has just been, you know, had a uh, um, you know, dirt sheet stuff and, you know, whatever they promote on social media. But why isn't Impact getting that? You know, why aren't people looking at it as like, okay, hey, I like what Impact's doing. Why are they willing to roll the dice on something that hasn't launched? That's what I look at. 
But um, overall, you know what? I felt like she had a place. Um, I like. I enjoyed Allie. I appreciate her contributions, and uh, I wish her the best of luck. Yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, they had a you know road to double or nothing video on either the Being Elite page or Cody's uh, YouTube, and you know it just she just seemed like she was so genuinely happy, and you know it, it was just nice to see. You know, somebody that you've watched over the years grow as a character and, you know, she's getting new opportunities. Not to say she wasn't giving opportunities in Impact, but I think what really soured people was uh, Braxton Sutter's response saying she's, I think, had, what, 15 years of being told no and now she finally has an opportunity, something like that. I mean, I don't know. I I, I had to relook at that tweet to really kind of understand why. Look, it, I don't need to go and tweet at her or tweet like, oh, that's bullshit. Like, I know she made her name an impact. Like, right. I don't <laughs> I, I seen from my own eyes. So, I mean, it's going to be I'm curious to see how she's using AEW. If my guess would be, I mean, the smart way to use her at this point, you know, maybe you have her, you know, maybe be the inaugural women's champion unless they have plans for Brandy to be the champion. But um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh but, boy! But I think to use her to her best abilities, you can book her strong. But she really needs to be a person that's helping the the newer newer talent, the younger talent. Because you know, I know she's in you know early thirties, and I'm not you know she's still got a lot of years left. But she's already established. She's made her name in Impact. So now her going over to AEW, the the goal should be to help develop some of the homegrown AEW talent. You know, it's interesting that you bring that up because at All In, we saw Madison Rain on the show, um, right? I believe she was on the show. She in that Fatal 4-Way? Yeah. Yeah. Now, why wasn't she brought in by AEW with, you know, the career she's had and all the things on her um, resume, you know, to, to bring up new talent? Because AEW doesn't know what they're looking for. That's why Impact jumped on it. They uh, made sure to get, they made sure to get her. Um, we, we don't know. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll 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 never know. I think the thing, and you know what I find with some of some of the the uh, the fan base is we're so inconsistent about what we're what we hate and what we accept because we'll get mad at Ali going to AEW. Yet Madison Rain struck out everywhere else and then comes back to Impact and everything is good. So so it's like, which one is it? Like, we're so inconsistent about what we're willing to accept and what we're willing to to um, be critical about. Hey, uh, please don't group us into that. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm just saying, like, <laughs> I, I see online and I'm not look, I'm not saying everybody because, I mean, I've seen people, you know, there's seen some people be very congratulatory towards Ali. You know, I've seen people being critical about the Madison thing. I myself, I don't have nothing against Madison, but if she's coming back to be in a role to help, because it all needs to be about building new talent, right. homegrown talent especially. But we know that's not going to happen. It's the same thing why I, I'm so down on the Gail Kim Tessa thing. I don't feel that's helping Tessa in any type of way, given that it's Gail, given that it's Gail Kim, and given how we've seen the feud. I mean, I mean, seeing the interactions, it's been so Gail Kim dominant. So what's that supposed to lead me to believe? So it's it, like that's just my thing because you want to, and and I think the one thing I wanted to touch on is while losing Ali is not going to hurt the company, you lost a homegrown talent. And right. When we're looking at this. It's the whole identity of impact. Where what person can we see and be like, hey, they became a star star currently on the roster right now? I guess you can look at a Sammy Callan, but let's face it. I mean, yeah, he's had some matches, but they've really never positioned him to be the guy. You know, he's a guy that has matches, but he's never been positioned as no. the as the guy. Everyone who's been built thus thus far. I mean, I guess I'd say most recently Tessa then too, to be fair. But everyone most recently, they've made their name elsewhere. And then it's kind of like Impact just capitalized on that and, you know, ran with it. So that's just the thing that I, you know, would, would you know, I find myself wondering. It's like, well, who's the person that we can look at? It's like, damn, Impact made them. Like, Impact made Ali, gave, made Ali a household name where mm -hmm. she can go to AEW and, you know, other companies might have been interested in her. So, I mean, that I think that's just my biggest takeaway. Yeah, no, that's fair. But like I said, hope it would have been good had they done something with Kiara where she was able to use Ali as a stepping stone to move up. But I guess since I think next week's episode will probably be the last week time we see Ali. 
And then it's like, where do we go from here now? Now you look at the knockout division, okay? So you got Ty the champion, okay? And just to tie into it, let, let me tie into this comment while I'm mm-hmm. going on this rant, <laughs> I guess, because we got one from Malcolm Lloyd where he was stating it was a you know more of a comment. We got more more comments this week. Um, you know, thank you for the comments about you know the pod and everything. But this one, the the one comment that stuck out, he said he's been um, underwhelmed as a late of Taya's knockout championship, which I agree. I mean, she's only defended it against Tessa. I mean, we're seeing her face Jordan Grace. There really wasn't no no build to it. I mean, I would have loved to see Jordan appear on this episode and yeah. kind of challenge challenge Taya, like, hey, like, don't overlook me. But, you know, we didn't get that. But you look at the division now. So we got Taya the champion. You got Jordan Grace. Okay, I'm guessing she's going to be the focal point moving forward. Sue Young's lost now. I mean, you got Rosemary. I'm guessing that's something that you can do right They'll there. They'll rekindle that, yeah. Yeah, okay. Then you got Kiera, and that's it. Like, the the thing about it is they're, they're they they in with all these divisions you should always have a couple people waiting in the in the wings and they don't have that instead it's just a rotation and it's hard to invest in so i mean maybe they'll bring us some new knockouts um maybe we'll see some returning ones hell maybe Gail Kim comes out of retirement and she just jumps back in i mean who knows <laughs> there you go there's always a possibility never write that off oh, yeah um yeah what else we got we got any more any questions that you wanted to touch on there are more comments but i i don't know if you wanted to talk about uh loki appearing appearing on the press pass as well as joey ryan yeah i i actually didn't get a chance to listen to it but uh it seemed like they were doing that because uh what lax had challenged him and i forget the other guy's name to a match right at united we stand or was yeah, it the other I, way around? I don't remember. I, I didn't tune in, but I really felt like both of these, these are just a way to kind of see the temperature of these people potentially appearing at, you know, a set of tapings, whether it's the Windsor or down the road. Um, in Loki's case, um, I know he has, a, a, you know, a reputation of having a bad attitude. I will say his most recent departure of Impact, like, I kind of am on his side in the sense of, like, you know, he was supposed to have a world title match that gets scrapped due to El Patron and his mm-hmm. transgressions. And instead, they want to put him in an X Division match. And, you know, that that's unfair. You know what I mean? Do I think the way he went about it was the right way? No. But, you know, I'd ask, like, how much are we, you know, as fans, are we willing to tolerate? I mean, are we cool with people walking out on a company and then, you know, willing to take them back in open arms are we willing to take a stand like look you're not going to disrespect impact because that's the thing that's plagued this whole company like people aren't afraid to disrespect the company Mm -hmm. like there's no fear because they know they i think they get a feeling they can always come back there's not one person that's i don't i don't think there's anyone that can't come back i think if el patron wanted to come back they'd let him come back like (laughs) so so and some people would be okay with that too so you just have to wonder, like, do you take a stand or you just allow anything just be a doormat? And then it, it, for Joey Ryan, and I've said before, like, you know, he's not my cup of tea, just his style. But, you know, there's an audience for it. Um, I just really wonder if, you know, if they were to bring him on board, are we getting what he does in the indies or are we going to get a whole different Joey Ryan? And if we're getting the character, what he does on the indies, I really wonder how that would resonate. You know, I'm sure some people would be on board because you got some people, they accept anything, but that might turn off some people too, you know, so be interesting. Yeah, that's that's a tough one because, again, I don't see him being on a televised show doing his shtick on the indies. I mean, especially with uh, Pursuit and their whole family-oriented network and, you know, bleeping out things and stuff like that. I do not see that going over well on a hunting network. Um but yeah, no, I don't know if it's just to promote United We Stand more, but I mean, the show is, I, I thought it did really well with ticket sales and everything, and shouldn't that be the main focus? Oh, talking about the United As We Stand? Yeah. I mean, they've promoted the hell out of it. You can argue they've promoted this better than Rebellion. Oh, yeah. Rebellion. I would agree with that. 
So they're they're you know they're really banking on this you know giving the card, but then too like it doesn't really even seem like an impact event. It seems like imp, imp it's gonna feature impact talent, but majority you know all Shows the matches of <laughs> all the matches are just impact versus talent from you know other places. So. Right. But um, now speaking of selling out, both nights at Windsor did sell out. I did see pictures from last night's crowd, and it looked like they had a nice full house there. So. Good to hear that. Um, I, I wish they would do more tapings there. It seems like their crowd has always been so lively. I mean, the one tapings that we had gotten last June, uh, the crowd was probably the best it is I have seen in quite some time. So hopefully this is a place they run more often than not. Yeah, I always thought Canada, what they have to do is when they're going to these different venues, kind of learn and see what you're drawing. And I think Canada is always the safe spot that they know they can go there. They kind of have an idea what they're going to draw. So, I mean, hopefully those shows, you know, the viewership for those shows, too, should really be well. Because I, I think, too, up until what post anniversary, that's when the uh, ratings were at a good good high during when, mm -hmm. you know, when they were on pop. Yeah, no, absolutely. And then I think they're running... Uh, Rebellion there at the Rebel Complex for that show, and then one night of tapings, and then I think they head to the um, ECW arena, and I think the tickets are on sale for that, and from what I've heard, they've been selling well there, so, you know, good for them. Yeah, good, uh, good all around, man. I yeah. mean, I'm look, I am looking forward to the, the Canada tapings. Yeah, 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 no, I mean, me too. Like I said, the crowd definitely adds a lot to the product you know when the crowd is into it it definitely helps with things um also you know I, I think i spoke about this last week maybe it was the week before but uh recently ring of honor ran the sam's town casino like impacted at their most recent vegas tapings and you know they just added a little more than what impact had done as far as the scenery like they did all the black mats throughout around the ring and they put the ring of honor um aprons i guess over the guardrails and I, I just think it added so much more to the production and just little things like that that i wish impact would do because i think they did the whole all the black mats around the ring at uh canada too and i just think little things like that go a long way oh yeah and you know i know ring of honor gets a lot of shit for you know oh look at what they drew well ring of honor is bold and i give them credit you know they'll go get an arena that might fit thousands and might only draw a couple thousand or i don't know what their numbers are 900 like they don't care i mean i think they're just more like the audience they have cool you know and they, of course they want to build on it but you know because if i go and get a room and it only fits 200 people and i have 200 people yeah it's gonna look packed it's a small room but if it's a big venue and it only has those same 200 people it's gonna look like it didn't draw anything so um yeah, you know, I don't keep, really keep up with Ring of Honor, but they seem fine to what they're doing. And, I mean, it seems like their fan base, um, you know, they seem content with that. So that's always good. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, anything else you want to touch on? No, nah, I mean, I think we covered a lot. Um, yeah. I think the biggest thing, you know, was the whole Alley News. And, you know, I didn't realize, like, how much, you know, positive and negative uh, – um, negative uh um how it'd be perceived but i mean i don't think this is the last we'll see um i'm not trying to speculate anything but i really think eli's next and i i just hope that we don't and what i'm saying just we just some some of the fans and everyone's like that i hope we don't get in the habit of every time somebody leaves we just kind of just shit on them on their way out like oh well yeah. you know he is overrated or she didn't do like you know what? I, we get it. You know, appreciate what they did. They gave their all during their time in Impact. They're moving on. Best wishes. You know, if it doesn't pan out, hey, you know what? That's a that's something that they got to deal with. But I just kind of just hate that because it it makes us seem seem uh, um you know unauthentic. Because when they're on board, you know, like I just remember you can look back, you know, weeks ago. Yeah, Dark Alley. You know, I'm loving all this now. Oh well, you know, screw her. She, yeah, you know, she wasn't really into it. Like. Like I always say, we're, we're some of us. We're just so inconsistent with it, and it's okay to be be a, a fan of the 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 um the company. I get all that, but you got to appreciate the performers because the performers do help make the company. 
You know what I mean? So, yeah, I, that was just my my thing, yeah. you know. So it's just it's kind of like if Eli, if we do get the news that Eli's leaving, you know, I'm waiting to see what you know what people come up with. All that dummy button was stupid, and he's a rock wannabe and Ric Flair wannabe. Like, oh, you know, it's it's, it's coming. But you know, <laughs> just thank them for what they did for the company and let them do their thing. That's it. Move on. People come and go, right? That's the, that's what we're saying now. Yeah, and it, it really shouldn't be like that, but I mean that's just the way it is. Like like I said, there's really no value. It doesn't seem like there's much of a value of um, you know, somebody that they're building, hey, let's keep you around. Like we want you to be a fix- fixture in impact. Like we don't see that. You know, I, I really believe if someone like Tessa asked tomorrow, Hey, I want my release, they'd grant it. I don't think they would say like, Hey, no, we're not gonna release you, you know, we need you. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. You know, and that's the thing, like everybody just seems so replaceable. And and I get it, because when you look at what the viewership and all this and that, like not one person's moving the needle, so to speak. You yeah, know, they it, didn't even it, hit five thousand last night. Like it goes up, it goes down. There's really no consistency with that. So I mean, yeah, you can afford to lose lose people, but I just like I said, you know, I just wonder the identity. Like when I look at impact now and you know, I used to be able to look at like, you know, when you had a EC three and um when Eli Drake was, you know, at the top of his game and you know, they had all these people that they were building, you know, from the ground up. And now it's just I just see people from former companies, you know, being thrusted into, you know, um, you Big know, being prominent, yeah. yeah, being prominently featured. Yeah. Well, I think we were done rambling on for now. So thanks for checking out our show, Ro. Thanks for joining me once again. And until next time, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.